it's not every day that our favorite two things in the world, business news and golf, smash together with the force of a Christopher Nolan atom bomb, sending shockwaves through the very fabric of geopolitics, the business of sports, and of course, the great game of golf. Okay, that might have been a little dramatic, but Neil, that's how it kind of felt yesterday in the office when we got news that the PGA Tour, the DP World Tour, which encompasses the European circuit, and Live, the offshoot Saudi-funded Challenger League, were setting aside their differences and their litigation to join forces under one unified for-profit entity. That entity will be primarily bankrolled by the PIF, which is the Saudi Investment Fund. Right now, we have no idea what the new entity will be called or what the new league might look like. For now, all we know is that the three tours will finish out their respective seasons and that Jay Monahan, the commissioner of the PGA, will be CEO and Yasser al Rumayan, the governor of the Saudi Public Investment Fund, will be chairman. We also know that a lot of people are pissed off. Oh, yeah. But, Neil, take us back a little bit to kind of how we got yeah. to this point. Uh, I'll sort of just do a little backstory to explain why this was such a shock to everyone. Literally, everyone's jaw drops. Yeah. Uh, so back in 2021, Live Golf was created as this rival to the PGA Tour. This sparked a civil war in golf. Live is bankrolled, as you mentioned, by the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund, which is known as the PIF. And with unlimited money, they offered the best golfers contracts of more than $100 million to defect from the PGA Tour and play in its league. Some golfers went, some stayed, but either way, it created this huge rift in the sport with the PGA Tour blocking all of the players who left for Live from returning to its league. Meanwhile, Live has this huge cloud over it because it is funded by Saudi money. There was this moral argument being made that you shouldn't play in or support live because of the human rights abuses associated with the Saudis. So over the past few years, some of the best players in the world, like Dustin Johnson and Brooks Kepka, did go to live to get their payday. While the PGA Tour and Liv sued each other into oblivion, it was chaotic and both sides felt like the situation was not sustainable. But it was still extremely surprising that these two warring factions all made up. Yeah, it was the Montague and the Capulets just joining forces all in, in under 24 hours. My big takeaway, if we go back to yesterday, was just... How do you not tell the players that this was happening? We were on social media and finding out in real time just as the players were. So we saw tweets from Colin Morikawa. We saw one from Justin Thomas who said, I was having a great practice session. And then he sent a screenshot of his phone and he was getting like hundreds and hundreds of texts. So it is just one of those things where the PGA has been on the side of the players. It's been a player first league. And then they drop this bombshell on them without informing them. It's a really, really bad look. And right now, Jay Monahan, the, the commissioner of the PGA is being called the most hated man in golf for kind of brokering this deal behind the scenes without telling the players. Right. And also because he's flip-flopped in the past, right. he used to criticize Liv like crazy. He told players, have you ever had to apologize for being a member of the PGA Tour? Sort of implying that it was a moral stain that they went over to play mm -hmm. on Liv. And then yesterday he went on a couple news outlets to give interviews about this new league. And he was like, yeah, I know you're going to call me a hypocrite, but the situation changed and I didn't see a path forward for the way we were going with Liv and the PGA PGA Tour. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. he was like, look, I had to I had to take the money, essentially, but people are criticizing him for being a sellout to the Saudis. Yeah. I also would be extremely mad if I was a PGA player who turned down a live contract right. because, again, you were kind of staking your moral flag on not joining this league funded by Saudi Arabia. And here are people, uh, Phil Mickelson, Dustin Johnson, apparently they're going to be able to kind of waltz back into this new tour. I was seeing reports from some golf insiders saying that new players might have to pay a fine in order to mm. rejoin the league. That's still kind of unsubstantiated rumors at this point. But I would be very, very mad if I got a nine-figure check sent my way. I said no, and then the people who did take the check still get to reap in the rewards of like this new yeah. global league. So yeah. A lot of mad players, for sure. We should talk about the Saudi role in all of this. First of all, I just want to touch on who this guy is. You mentioned him earlier, Yasser al-Rumayan. Everyone should know this guy because he's 
literally one of the most powerful people on earth. So he's going to be the chairman of the new entity. He's also the governor of the PIF. So he controls $600 billion in funds. Uh, he is the chairman of Saudi Aramco, which is the most profitable company on earth. That is the oil, that is the Saudi owned uh, oil giant. He's on Uber's board of directors because the Saudi fund invested in Uber way back in the day, yeah. billions of dollars. He's also the castle of, or he's also the chairman of Newcastle United which is this big Premier League team that the PIF the bought. Man, the man's a professional chairman. He's a chairman on every single entity on earth, it seems like. But, but yeah, it, very it, powerful. Right, so it's kind of spooking people how much the, you know, the Saudis are infiltrating global sports. Yeah. They basically control golf now. Right. That is without a doubt happening. And they've been making huge moves to bring over massive players in soccer, which is without a doubt a much more influential and powerful sport than golf as much as we <laughs> like golf, but soccer is watched by billions of people and they're bringing over the best players, spending billions of dollars to bring over Benzema, who's a huge French soccer star. They already had Ronaldo mm -hmm. and they're eyeing Messi, who would be their crown jewel. Yeah, people are kind of saying the sports watching agenda is almost complete because yeah, they, they now basically control golf. They're, you just said it, they're spending almost a billion dollars on players to bring over to the Saudi league. So we've been talking about, we've mentioned sports watching on the show countless times, but now it seems like they, they've, they've done it. Like they've completed it. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you want more morning brew daily, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also check out the rest of our episodes, wherever you get your podcasts, new episodes drop at 7 a.m. Eastern Monday through Friday. And you can email us at morningbrewdaily at morningbrew.com.